What's up, Internet? One of the easiest ways to lower the temperatures of your CPU is to use a quality thermal paste. The problem is, it's kind of hard to figure out which thermal paste to use because there are so many of them on the market and they are different prices. At a certain point, you just want someone to shove something in front of your face and tell you this is the one you want, this is the one you buy, this is the one you use. And so for this video, we're going to be doing a roundup of six different thermal pastes from different manufacturers at different price points. And we'll see if the more expensive one is better or if you can get away with using a more value-oriented thermal paste. For this roundup, we have the Cooler Master Master Gel Pro, Deepcool Z3, everyone's favorite Noctua NTH1, the Noctua NTH2, Arctic MX2, and Arctic MX4. The Arctic thermal pastes were provided by Arctic, but everything else was taken from our shop inventory. So of course, before I tell you who won, bibitin muna kita with a word from our sponsor. Whether your PC is brand new or an old war machine, siguro malapit siya sa puso mo. But no matter how careful you are, sometimes accidents happen. Or sometimes it's not your fault. Nagkalindol, baha, tumutulo yung condo unit sa taas ng unit mo. Wala kang control sa mga bagay na yan, but they can damage your devices. The worst is when it is someone's fault and your things are stolen. Uti na lang, it's easy to have peace of mind for your devices with ProTech Computer Insurance from CocoGen. If your desktop or laptop is damaged with ProTech Insurance, you are assured you will have the funds needed to get it repaired or replaced. The insurance covers a wide series of unfortunate events, from fire and lightning, to accidental damage, to theft, typhoon, and flood damage, broad water damage, the list goes on. And the cost is very reasonable, as low as 1,000 pesos for a desktop and 1,500 for a laptop, and that's for a whole year already. You can apply for ProTech Computer Insurance at any CocoGen branch or inquire via the phone or email. Details in the video description. Time for the results? Not yet. Because how we got the results is just as important as the results themselves. So here's a brief rundown of our test setup. For the case, we used the MacCube 110 with three intake fans and one exhaust fan. For the CPU, we went with the Ryzen 3 3100, which is, you know, a very decent CPU. It's definitely not a gaming CPU, but it's more realistic what you would find in an office environment or in the rig of a more average consumer. We also kept the stock cooler. We didn't use any third-party cooler. Again, because we wanted to try for a more realistic setup, not the more high-end builds that some of the enthusiasts are used to. The motherboard was a Gigabyte B550M DS3HAC. And the software used to stress test the CPU was RealBench from ASUS. RealBench does a good job of simulating real-world operating conditions instead of more synthetic or artificial benchmarks which do stress out the CPU, but they don't accurately reflect computations or operations which would normally arise in real-world day-to-day settings. For all of our testing, the CPU fan speed was set at 100%, and we took two measurements for each thermal paste. One was at the base speed of 3.6 GHz after running on 100% load for 30 minutes, and the other one was at an overclock. We managed to get a stable overclock at 4.2 GHz, which is around a 20% increase. So we ran that also for 30 minutes at 100% CPU load, and then we took the temperatures. Did that alone and the but you guys just want to know the results, so here they are. At the base speed of 3.6 GHz, actually the results were shockingly close. In fact, there really was no difference between any of the thermal pastes. The up or down of 1 degree was a negligible difference. These are the max temps reached by each thermal paste. And yes, while the Noctua NTH1 did edge out everyone, again, it's a very small difference. So what we're seeing here is that all of the thermal pastes we tried out can handle handle the thermal output of an R3 3100 operating at normal speed. Yes, we did have it at 100% for 30 minutes which is a bit uncommon but even then, all of the thermal pastes, even the cheapest CM Master Gel Pro could handle the temperature. Things get more interesting when we do the overclock and here we can clearly see the Arctic MX4 edging out the competition. Its max temp only reached 87 degrees which is a little toasty but cooler than everybody else and really not a bad performance considering that we're achieving around a 20% increase from the CPU. To be honest, I'm kind of disappointed in the NTH2. I don't know what happened here, why its performance is not as good as I expected it to be. 
and disappointingly benchmarked against some of its other peers. So the da parin on the da, you know, it's like testing setup, methodology, numbers, numbers. If you just want to know who won, or again, bottom line, what should you buy? The Deepcool Z3 is an excellent budget thermal paste. If you want to splurge a little bit, then everyone's favorite Noctua NTH1 is, you know, the middleman. He really does well in all aspects. The price is quite good too, especially if you get it from us. And finally, if you want to go for performance, the Arctic MX4 beat out all of the other contenders. But really, if you have a mid-range CPU and you're not going to overclock, then you can get any thermal paste. Again, the cheapest one we had in the roundup is the Cooler Master Master Gel Pro. And even that one managed to keep temperatures in within the range of everyone else for testing on normal load. So, you know, if you're not gonna do anything nuts with your CPU, and you know, it's a very mid-range CPU, then any thermal paste from this roundup will serve you well. So this is the first time we've done this kind of thing, a very in-depth testing of multiple brands and you know, we had to keep redoing the test setup every time we change the thermal paste. So this is my roundabout way of saying, if you have any suggestions on how we can improve the setup, then please do let us know in the comments so that we can incorporate them into future roundups and well as just get better in general in comparing contrasting hardware and things to look out for while testing. But I hope you found this roundup useful and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching internet and special thanks to our top fans. Christian Espinosa, John Ruben Ocha, ITX Addict, Ian Meru, Richard Onkinko, Leah Magnaye, and Dom H. Maraming maraming salamat po.